Happy Stony Sunday, everyone! We are back! Happy Stony Sunday! If you don't know him, this is my boyfriend, Mio. Let me introduce you. He has been on the show before, and I am excited to film again with you because we get extra high, I think. We do get extra high. <laughs> I think I'm nervous and excited because we're christening a new piece today and I just like, we haven't even taken it out of the box yet. No, it's still in there. We've just like peeked at it and that's Opened it. Opened it and then closed it. I'm so excited. So I don't want to wait too long. I'm going to bust that piece out, show it off and get right into it, you guys. Bam! So this is by Higher Standards, which as you can tell, says right on it, handcrafted in the USA, which blew my mind because a production piece is not often made in the USA. <sighs> We've even heard of some of the like bigger production lines that were made in the USA moving out of the country and not acknowledging that or disclosing that to their customers and their resellers and it's such an issue. So I'm really impressed that Vape World is working with this brand, Higher Standards, for a yeah. made in the USA option. I'm excited to check it out. Oh my God. So I'm obsessed with the fact that this box doubles as a carrying case. Like, I think that's why I haven't even wanted to take it out yet. Cause this like, look, I just do, do, do. Ready to go. I wouldn't pack it like this necessarily cause there's not like the foam on top, but it's super convenient for just like picking it up and going, you know? You wanna pull, oh, you only have one hand I only right got now. one hand. <laughs> Mio's cast comes off the Wednesday before Thanksgiving. So yeah. this Wednesday, Pretty exciting times. <gasps> wow, it's heavy, it's thick. Oh, okay, it's even stamped right on it, USA. That's pretty sweet. Let's see, can I show you guys? I don't know if you guys can see if it'll focus. Will you hit the thing so it'll focus? Right there. It was worth the try. I think that's pretty cool. You yeah. wanna check it out? Yeah, it looks pretty heavy duty, it feels nice. And then in this case, there's like, oh, it looks like a keychain dabber, a mini dabber, because I know that there's also a full size dabber. So I think that's the difference. Multiple options. You only have one hand and I don't have any fake nails on. So how are we going to open any of this? We're going to figure it out together, though. I think try we it can. Out. Yeah. I swap you. Bam, bam. Yeah, this is way heavier than I expected it to be. This is pretty nice. And then there's also a nail that comes in here that is really, really thick. A super thick quartz nail. So I don't see in here like an instruction booklet or anything suggesting exactly how long I should wait for that nail. Um, it looks like it's like a four or five millimeter nail. So I'm thinking probably like a minute 15. Mio's definitely a better judge of the wait times than me. I am so impatient. I go in at like 15 seconds oh, all little, the time. I think they got little like sleeves on them. Oh, so it doesn't get like sticky? Yeah. Uh -ho -ho. yeah. Oh yeah, and I'm looking for questions. I almost forgot, I just got sent into this bong. <laughs> I think we've got everything. So we've got concentrates, we've got the right, pretty much everything you need to dab except for the torch and the concentrates came in that box. Mm -hmm. But check it out, Higher Standards did make a torch. So Vape World also sent this over, which was perfect timing because my two torches at the house, uh, they've it, been dying. They've been on the outs. <laughs> yeah, we've been using a lighter to start them for months. So I'm really excited that now we have a working, functional, big shot blazer torch. I'll try that out. It's like a little bit high, but I think it's okay. Like I didn't get any in my mouth, Maybe but I was a little worried. On there, okay. The suction will be... I think that's pretty sweet. Yeah. <laughs> and there was a question from Mercedes asking if either of us have ever gotten bashed or had negative interactions from our weedy apparel when we're out and about town. Cause we do wear weedy apparel a lot. Yeah. And I just admit that. Um, I don't think I've, experienced it at least like in not in santa cruz i feel more often i get like complimented on <laughs> some of the weedy shirts you know some people i feel like get a kick out of them so but i don't know i can't think of anywhere that i've really been that people have like really given me a hard time about my weedy apparel one time someone gave me a really hard time it started nice it started kind of as a compliment it was this little lady like she was out with her husband at brunch and I was at brunch as well trying to mind my own fucking business and this little 
kind of oldish lady said something. I don't know. It was nice enough that I didn't like tune her the fuck out from the start. But then is like, that's okay for you, but other people get holes in their brains from pot. And I was just like, um, I really want to enjoy my food right now. And I was like in Australia on like a beachside cafe area. And I just remember like looking around and being like, I'm having a great fucking day. And like the last thing I need is to sit here and listen to this lady tell me that cannabis is gonna drill a hole in my brain when like cannabis brought me to this exact moment right here where I'm sitting at the table right next to her. So yeah. I think we're doing okay. Um, that was like probably the most negative thing. One time the person I was with was approached by someone because of the shirt that he was wearing and it ended up being a fucking pastor that was like so pro marijuana and was like people need to know it's God's plan and blah blah and it was just kind of one of those moments where you're like wow I didn't see any of no. this going this way but like dang that's pretty cool so that's probably the coolest one like I was just sitting there like my shirt's weedy too guy like do you want to talk to me <laughs> but I witnessed that one We've pushed the pets downstairs and put up a blockade while we are christening this rig, and I feel like I can hear whining. They're, like, oh, so yeah. sad. Especially Gobi. So sad, but safety first. Okay, so we're going to heat it up. Do you have any, like, how long should we heat it for or anything? Should we just do it? I think about 45 seconds. Wait, you can't count while we're doing this. Let's get, oh, my, oh, oh my God. I have my phone. we got to get a timer going. If I'm dabbing a lot on the show, I kind of like to use the vape exhale because I don't have the torch sound. But I feel like for christening this rig and for giving it a thorough review, we need to hit it the whole episode. <laughs> so don't mind the torch sound. Okay, so while we wait for the nail to cool, let's answer Brian's question. I saw it coming on Facebook, but here it is. It's, do we have any tips for someone going to their first cannabis event? They're attending an expo next weekend for the very first time, and they were just kind of like nervous, excited, and we've been to a few at this point. <laughs> so do you have any tips that you would advise? Um, I mean, if you have a friend to go with you, that I feel like it can be helpful. But if not, I think like going in and like, I don't know if there's like a particular like brand or like anything, like one certain thing you really want to see, but I feel like picking like a certain destination and getting there, like trying to get there first, you know, cause that like gives you like an objective, something to do rather than just kind of wandering around aimlessly, so. And a lot of them put out their maps and mm -hmm. like if you follow that brand on social media, they'll probably post exactly where mm -hmm. you can find them. Yeah. Should I go one minute? I think one, I'd go like 115. But... Let's give it a try. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. Make like a little plan. Yeah. But also know that like deadlines and like specific meeting times are really hard at events. Yeah. I think our carb cap's too long. We need the directional cap. <coughs> 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 oh shit. <coughs> we got options. <coughs> <coughs> Okay, well, besides the fact that I'm always a coffer, that was really nice. I like the bubbles. I wasn't worried about it getting water in my mouth mm -hmm. at all during the hit. That's good. I would also suggest for a cannabis event, like, if you can have extra cash with you, like, actually bring some money to spend because the food always ends up being more than you think. You're going to want to drink even if you thought you would just be fine with your water. And I feel like having, like, 50 to to $100 if you can save up beforehand and actually bring that in cash ready to go, that makes the day go a little bit faster and easier because otherwise I feel like we're waiting in line at ATMs. We're hoping booths, if we end up wanting to buy something, actually take the card, and that can just be such a hassle. Yeah. So a little bit of cash can definitely be a big help at those events. Okay, so I guess we have to load you up a dab too so. so you can try it, right? <laughs> well, when I broke off some of the Super Silver Haze, like this little boop right. right there, if you want to do that one. Okay. Whew. So I see a question coming in from Jared asking how cannabis has helped Mio with transitioning. If there was anything in particular that it helped you with, maybe. Yeah. Um, that's a great question. I, uh, I think the first thing that probably comes to mind <coughs> is that I, as a, I guess a teenager, I originally started smoking weed to help with anxiety, or not, not anxiety, but insomnia. Um, I had a really hard time sleeping, 
and I think a lot of that came from the anxiety I had around being trans and not at that time not really like knowing that that's what was going on with me I didn't really have the words like you know to put to it and so using cannabis to sleep was definitely beneficial for me otherwise I really don't know how I would have like slept at yeah. all and so so at first it started like with kind of like an emotional or like therapeutic use yeah I mean sleeping is a physical thing for sure but your loss of sleep was like probably right. from something a little more internal than just like a it know. wasn't just like a physical like symptom I was a, a you know thing I was dealing with it was definitely from like a had like an emotional or mental background to it but then after your surgeries, you talked about using it kind of for nerve pain. Yeah, definitely. Um, <coughs> and even like a little, even before surgery, um, when I found out I just had like some, I guess they call it like an undiagnosed nerve pain that I deal with in my right arm particularly, um, I found cannabis to be really helpful. And that's probably when I like increased my cannabis use actually. And then definitely post-surgery has been really helpful with the nerve pain. I've definitely carried that over into it. and. I think adding like tinctures in and stuff yeah. like that is something that's new to me but has been helpful. So. Yeah, we try and keep a pretty good stock of tinctures, which thankfully Treat Well makes possible. So Treat Well has really, I don't want to say spoiled us, but pretty much spoiled it's us nice. with any available like ratio or if we wanted to try the THC or the THCA, mm -hmm. we've had a chance. So it's really nice to be able to try those tinctures because I really have found relief too for my own uses. And yeah. you, we use different ones mm -hmm. because we have different uses. So Definitely. I think that's really interesting. Set that timer. I keep grabbing for a lighter, but now I'm remembering that we don't need we one don't for need this it. torch. Oh my God. Flip it. I have a question coming in from Anthony asking if we ever take tolerance breaks, little, little smoke breaks to rebuild our tolerance. And my answer is no, fuck no. I do not. I enjoy the effects of cannabis and I have never found my tolerance to be something that is inhibiting me from enjoying the effects of cannabis. I feel like by mixing up edibles and like we were even saying different types of tinctures and concentrates and flour and strains like even just mixing up strains I feel like I'm able to keep my endocannabinoid system constantly processing a different range and I find that helpful for me so I don't take tolerance breaks yeah no. <laughs> I don't really take tolerance breaks I did stop dabbing for a year but that was just because I just got tired of dabbing I wasn't en enjoying it as much um, and then I had to stop for a week when I was in the hospital recovering from surgery, but that was like not my choice. I would have yeah. smoked weed in there if I could. Oh my god. I feel like, didn't we just read about some area that was trying to pass? Yeah, there was some state, I think, that was trying to pass so that there could be cannabis medication actually inside a hospital. And it wasn't smoking, it was definitely more like edibles and tinctures, but me and I both were like, could you imagine? the patients like that could be helped oh my god Ever, it was a lot it was a lot to really think about i'm cruising through for some questions from the live stream stacy asked what the next hair color is gonna be and i'm sticking with green for a while i did not expect to love it so much i've been using overtone to keep it super bright and i still am just like obsessed with it so Hillary at Lavish Salon took me on this hair journey, twists and turns and things I never expected and I feel like I've plateaued for a moment and I'm gonna like stay at green. I like it. I yeah, like it. Green. And fun. look for the holidays, I'm gonna be green and red. Like, ugh, I'm already excited. It's perfect. Oh, I do want to say, by the way, the new holiday shirts are in the works. The pre-orders are open. Mio is rocking, I think, last, last year's. year's. Yep. So the only thing I'm saying about this year's shirt is that they won't be red. There are like two or three years of red holiday shirts and it's time to totally switch it up. That's all I can say. They are completely surprised until we like reveal them. So about the series, I'm moving on. I'm loading up another dab. I don't want to say anything else. There's a bunch of new merch coming. I just, I have to stop though or I'm, ah! I already spilled the beans on the, on the reefer glass Twitter. And I showed some of the stuff that I said I wasn't gonna show. And I was like, I just can't keep a secret. What'd you think of the rig? I thought it was nice. I thought it hit really well. Really smooth. And I think that uh, timing combo was good. We've locked on to it. The nails all clean. Yeah, the nail cleaned out nice. 
yeah, if you guys were wondering, so a Q-tip after what might be considered like a low temp dab, and it keeps the nail pretty clean right there. I mean, obviously this is a brand new nail, so of course it's gonna be clean, but if you are taking high temp dabs, as soon as you hit your nail, it's gonna turn black, or it's gonna have yeah. like that brown burnt residue. So a nice low temp dab, Q-tipping it after, and we can keep this nail nice and clear, hopefully for a really long time, like months and months and months. Yeah, That's the goal. <laughs> Do the timer! Okay. It's going. Jade is asking where my favorite place to get stoned is or a place I would love to get stoned. I want to do more beach smoking. That's like the first thing that comes to mind. I feel like when we're traveling and we go to the beach, I'm not risking very much. I want to bring glass or a bud and it's like... I just don't want to be arrested or have a hassle while I'm like traveling. It makes me so nervous. So we kind of just be like discreet, hiding yeah. it, you know? But I would love to actually be able to smoke more publicly with my toes in the water and that type of thing. If you're wondering why we don't do it in Santa Cruz, it's called the wind and the fog. And it's just, our beaches are beautiful, but they're kind of too cold to actually sit and like soak at, you yeah. know? Yeah. And our water is freezing. Freeze. It's true. It's even hard to smoke a joint on our beach because yeah. the wind, they just burn all sideways. It's yeah. Yeah, you have to like go into a little like beach cave mm -hmm. to smoke a joint. So it's nice. Don't We're not complaining. I love it here, definitely. But that's probably what I want to add is some more warm, smoke-friendly beaches. Mm -hmm. That's what I want. <laughs> I think I like going up into the redwoods and smoking. Mm -hmm. Going in like some of the trails. Yeah. <coughs> Are you getting some good hits out of it? That nail is pretty thick too, so it keeps going for a while. Forever? Yeah. It's your own party dad. Oh my god. It really does last forever. <coughs> I'm super glad that Vape World is having like more glass options on their site and specifically American made brands because as a distributor and especially when they were just distributing vaporizers and accessories I feel like they didn't always prioritize American made stuff because it's hard to find an American made electronic product like start to finish but as they've expanded into glass I feel like they've listened to the feedback that people have said and like as cool as those other brands are, that they have big names on them and they have really nice hits, people want American-made stuff. Mm -hmm. So I think that's really cool that they're listening. Yeah. <coughs> 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 yeah, you gotta load yourself up. I am You're out. I'm out of service at this point. Kai is asking if we have any plans for the holidays. And uh, we kind of spend it with your family for Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. and then Christmas. Last year we went to Jamaica. Oh, that was so much fun. This looks so perfect. <laughs> I'm gonna spend all of Christmas reliving. Reliving Jamaica. Christmas Eve and Christmas Day there. It was a lot of fun. Hemp massages, hemp oh. oil massages, yeah. snorkeling with the fish in a Christmas themed bathing suit. Like, so worth it. Yeah. Worth every would, dollar. Would do. <laughs> see a question in from Karthus that is definitely on my mind right now. How do you feel about the limit on THC in edibles in California starting next year? Because our rules just came out with six weeks to go. We were like, oh yeah, remember that thing we passed last year? We better get on it. So I'm not stoked that they were like such short notice and then just reading other people's reports of them. I haven't actually sat down and read 270 something pages. I've just read other breakdowns and highlights kind of. But the THC limit definitely was one that I'm not comfortable with. I don't like it. Some people need high doses but don't want to eat an entire chocolate bar just to get that. You yeah. Know? Like, that's ridiculous. Yeah, with the way that edibles are made in like so many sugary, sugary forms and high fat forms. And yes, there are some savory or some like well, right now, high dose, small portion options, mm -hmm. but they're basically ending that and they're making it so each serving needs to be, from my understanding, 10 milligrams, mm -hmm. and then the package itself can be 100. And just to give you guys some sort of perspective of 
what that range can be, 10 milligrams can fuck someone up if they do not consume it regularly or if they're just the type of person whose cannabino endocannabinoid system processes it in that way. You've been affected by 10 milligram edibles pretty regularly, like when we first started dating and hanging out, because he didn't consume them before that very often. They hit you hard. For me, I consume a wide form of cannabis products all the time, like I was saying earlier. I generally start with a 100 milligram edible and we have the same effects. So I'm not getting over medicated with my 100 milligrams and it hasn't accelerated every year. I need 150 and then 200 and 300. No, this has been something that once my body was regularly consuming and processing supplemental cannabinoids, I feel like I leveled out to where I was gonna be and I know my doses now. 100 milligrams for me in an edible is a great starting dose. If I still need more, it's because it's a very high stress situation. <coughs> it's because it's like an extended travel where I'm gonna be needing to feel medicated for like eight hours or something. At that point, I'm gonna go for a super high dose, like 500 milligrams, 1,000 milligrams, yeah. you know? Exactly. Yeah. So I really feel like, I, I don't wanna discredit that low dose edibles have a place in the market but to eliminate high dose for people like me and a lot of other patients mm -hmm. that's not fair yeah. i don't like it i don't like it at all hate it oh my god stacy has the question of the year we adopted <coughs> daffodil in march and stacy is asking if we have any new fur babies coming in the future <coughs> mio's coughing his way out of this all question right. i feel like um we try and be responsible pet owners. So like, do we want more pets? Yeah. Yeah. We talk about it all the time. All the time. Yeah. I'm like a, if it happens to like land in our hands and it is unavoidable, I mean, what am I gonna do? But I don't think like we should actively be searching for another animal. No, we have three dogs, two cats, and five lizards in a one-bedroom apartment. And it's a very spacious one-bedroom apartment. It's bigger than, I think, any one-bedroom apartment I saw in Oakland or San Francisco. It's huge. Um, but for more than that amount of animals, it's definitely like, are we being selfish or are we really helping them at that point? Like, I feel like at that point, it's like, who's, who's getting more out of it? Are we saving an animal or are we just wanting to surround ourselves with all the cute very animals all the time so one weird thing well not weird one helpful thing that i was taught when i was little all the time for like everything is if you want something go like play with what you have for at least like 20 minutes or half an hour so if i wanted new makeup i try and go use the makeup i already have a little bit more and make sure i actually enjoy it and whenever i was younger and i'd be like i want a new cat or i want a hamster or, i want this my mom would be like let's go home and let's watch you spend half an hour even playing with the cats that you have because yeah. you barely even see them and i'd be like it's a really fair point. So I try and like I try and use that. And so whenever I feel like I really am like this close to being like, let's go, let's go get a cat. I'm like cuddling with our own dogs and cats more, and I try and interact with them more because like you gotta appreciate what you have. Definitely. But we're like this close though, I would say. Yeah. Oh, and a great final question for today, and I wonder if we can like share this dab because the nail is like staying hot for so long. Okay. You want to give it a try? Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> so. I'm gonna heat this up and then ask the final question of the day. Whose is it gonna be? Did I already say the name? I don't think so. Okay. <laughs> then it's a mystery. Okay, the final question of the episode from Mackenzie asking how do we deal with having different needs for our meds? Because I've mentioned it in a few different episodes and I'd say like you go for more THC rich and sativa dominant. Mm -hmm. And I go for more like CBD rich and indica dominant. But you use CBD, mm -hmm. but just like on the daily, I like it more. <laughs> so how do we deal with that? Because we only have like so big of a budget and so much fucking space. Like we're only humans. So. Yeah. Well, I think it also, I mean, it kind of helps. I think that I tend to smoke more flour and you tend to dab more. So I feel like I can like kind of like weight more the like sativa stuff in the flower and get a little bit of indica because I still enjoy that at night you mm -hmm. know but then with dabs I feel like we're usually more on the like CBD or hybrid indica side okay. which kind of works because you're yeah kinda... <clears throat> but like I feel like like 
if I go to the dispensary, I kind of try to keep in mind what I know that you like. And I think we've, like, shared with each other, like, what kind of strains and kind of stuff that we tend to like or enjoy. I forgot we were sharing. <coughs> we didn't for a second work. <coughs> 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 I think realistically sometimes we're buying smaller amounts for each of us so that we have different types for both of us um but it is important that we both have something that is actually going to help us yeah. oh. what you're saying though about you consuming more flour and me consuming more concentrates I think that really helps because I'm not reaching into his flour jar I'm not like I try and get like little bong hits throughout the day and especially in the morning I definitely like them but when he's taking a bong hit, I might have a dab, and it kind of just balances out in that way. So I feel like we make it work, but it is something we consider, I guess, when stocking the shelves. Yeah. Whew! Well, I'm dabbed up. I definitely am super stoked that on this ripped. rig. Once again, I just love that it's even stamped USA. Thank you for watching Stony Sunday. Thank you for joining the live sesh if you could. I don't know if we'll be live next week, but you'll find out on Stony Sunday's Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook page. We'll uh, figure it out. Stay high, you guys. Have a good one. Bye.